an artifact that differs from all similar ones ever known before. A mystery that remained unsolved for more than a half a century. An intention that seemed good only at first glance. This used to be a monastery bakery and a bookstore. Today it's one of the best museums in post-Soviet territories. Its building is an architectural monument dating back to the 17th to 18th centuries in Ukrainian Baroque style. Its collection is a precious Ukrainian chronicle of sorts from the Bronze Age to the present. The building survived a fire in the mid-18th century and the destruction of World War II. The exhibits depict invasions by Mongol hordes the Bolsheviks and Nazis. Of course, back then they weren't exhibits, but mere jewelry masterpieces and sacred utensils. Today they are prime exhibits housed in the Museum of Historical Treasures of Ukraine. Keeping hold of many of them was met with stiff opposition, like for example the gold lining of a Scythian Goritas, which immediately became one of the most famous artifacts of that time. Firstly, this is a large solid plate that adorned the Goritas. It was from the middle, third quarter of the 4th century BC. And most likely it was made by craftsmen of Bosporus. Here, for example, there was the city of Panticapium, the capital of the Bosporan kingdom, present-day Kerch, and other cities. It probably came from there. The lining was decorated with artistic relief images, in particular with mythological scenes from the life of Trojan war hero Achilles. He was very popular among Greeks, especially among the Greek colonists of the northern Black Sea region, since they considered him to be a defender against barbarians, a protector hero of sorts, or even a protector god. Sanctuaries were built to worship him, temples were dedicated to him and so on. There is a lot of different evidence of this. And now we suddenly encounter scenes with him on a Goritas. Besides, you won't see battle scenes there, or anything else that would indicate that this is the warrior Achilles. There are scenes about the education of Achilles, about how he hid, how Odysseus in the end exposed him and brought him to the Greek camp near Troy, and so on. All this seems like a veiled story about Achilles, and in order to unravel this myth, you need to know the whole of Achilles' story. But this is not the only paradox contained in the ornaments depicted on this artifact. There are others, more global ones, which have been troubling scientists for many decades. This ornament is very interesting. The images on this plate, they are quite interesting, unusual and completely different from everything that we know about Greco-Scythian terudics. That is, the terudics, those objects from precious metals, which Greek craftsmen were making for the Scythians. Why do we put them together under the name of Greco-Scythian terudics? Because these items were Greek in style, in artistic and technical methods, but they were intended specifically for Scythians. These were the items that the Greeks did not use, they were used by Scythians. And in such a set of objects, from the golden breastplate to combs, bowls, goblets and so on, there are these plates, they are absolutely dissimilar to the rest. Why? Because only Scythians would have used a Goritas shaped like this. This item was designed specifically for them. The shape of this lining is perhaps the only thing indicating that this item belongs to the Scythians. 
but the finish of the place is made in a purely Greek style. There is not a single plot about Scythians among those adorning the artifact, only scenes of Greek life. And one of the most common opinions is that these are scenes from the life of Achilles, hero of the Trojan War, who was very popular among Greeks, especially among the Greek colonies of the northern Black Sea region. The Greeks regarded him to be a defender from the barbarians. In order to unravel the myth depicted on the gold lining, you need to know the whole life story of the ancient Greek hero Achilles, known to us thanks to the epic poem by the legendary poet Homer. It was written in the 8th to 9th centuries BC, that is four or five centuries before those golden greco scythians linings were made. It was very popular among Greeks, and in fact, all these stories are built on it. But of course, the Scythians did not know this. For them it was something strange and incomprehensible. And here question and the main mystery arise. Why were these plaques made? Why was Achilles and not the Scythians depicted there? And what event prompted the making of an entire series of such plates? After all, we have very few items that were mass-produced. In Chertom Lick, there was a sword scabbard decorated with battle scenes showing Greeks fighting barbarians. There is one more find just like it. Separate items were also found there. According to researchers, each Scythian ruler or warrior wanted to have their own exclusive set of Greek items. Something of his own, unique, something others didn't have. And that made him special. And so every person had something of their own. For example, a Scythian warrior from the Tovsta Mahila grave had a breastplate. The king from Chertom League Barrow had an amphora with images of Scythians, and so on and so forth. Some had their own sets of bowls, some had weapons with special decorations, something unusual, and they were always saying something about the Scythians. After all, the objects that they wore spoke about heroic moments from the lives of the first kings, from the epic, from Scythian mythology. But here everything is completely different. There are Greek images, Greek mythology, Greek ideas. And it's unclear why was it done this way. Moreover, archaeologists found four such plates, perhaps there were even more, but we understand that archaeology reflects only a small part of that material world of antiquity. There was one exact duplicate, now it is in the Hermitage, and it was found in Chertom Lick, back in 1863, then another one was found in Ilintsi Barrow. This was in Vinica region, but it disappeared during the war, so the third plate is exactly the same as the one we have in our museum. And almost at the same time a fourth plate was found, exactly the same, in a barrow near rostov on don There were four plates that were made on the same matrix, with the same stamp, and it was probably a gift from the Bosporus rulers to Scythian kings, Scythian leaders, aristocrats. There is also another type of Goritas, with slightly different images, and one of these plates was discovered in the tomb of Philip II, who is the father of Alexander the Great in Vergina. 
And this is why we can put an approximate date on the entire series of these plates. So this is the third quarter of the 4th century BC. This is from around the 350s, the 300s BC, most likely the 330s BC. This is the, the entirety of what is reliably known to scientists about this artifact. But the find from Melitopol Barrow gave rise not only to the mystery that has been puzzling scientists for more than half a century, but also to a Soviet Union-wide scandal. Ukrainian archaeologists had barely found this piece of Greco-Scythian Tarudiks when a demand from the Hermitage came to transfer all the finds to it for storage. But this wasn't a scandal, there was no scandal at all. Rather, these were, so to speak, the positions of various parties. Because at that time it was 1954, so we need to go back to that time, at least mentally, and understand that Kyiv was still being rebuilt. There wasn't a single museum that would exhibit gold jewelry. And their experience when in the 30s, the end of the 20s, beginning of the 30s, when new life was being created and new museums were being built, a large central museum was created in Kharkiv. And back then a significant number of items were transferred from the Hermitage, including items from such large royal barrows. Naturally, the most valuable things weren't transferred, just duplicates. Some finds were still left in St. Petersburg. Needless to say, those were exclusive items. Unfortunately, during the evacuation all these items got bombed and they were simply destroyed, obliterated, or just didn't survive. And so, recalling this rather bitter experience and such, as well as the lack of proper storage and facilities for exhibiting gold items, I think this was the reason why the Hermitage suggested transferring those finds there. Because supposedly, a phrase was used that these were Hermitage level finds. But many scientists and other representatives of the Ukrainian intelligentsia don't agree with this viewpoint. They're convinced that the storage of priceless exhibits was the last thing Russians were concerned about. Even during the days of the Russian Empire, there was this attitude that all precious things found during excavations, all archaeological finds that deserve special attention, Scythian, for example, or from even earlier periods, were to be taken to the Hermitage. The Hermitage had a special storage place, and there were taken there. It was well generally accepted, as one archaeologist wrote, a generally accepted tradition. The removal of Scythian historical jewelry from the territory of Ukraine had already begun in the 18th century. In particular, they began transporting such treasures to Moscow and St. Petersburg during Milgunov's excavations in the 1730s. This continued in the 19th century. In particular, let's recall a decree issued by the Tsarist government, according to which jewelry was to be removed from the territory of southern Ukraine. For example, from Crimea during the so-called Crimean War of 1853 to 1856. Recalling the specific rarities removed from Ukraine, we can name among them the famous Scythian comb, which was found during an expedition of 1912 to 1913 in one of the barrows. Now this Scythian comb is one of the most valuable finds in the Hermitage. They even made a special anniversary medal containing the image of this Scythian golden calm, 
ювілейну медаль з зображенням цього скільки. Later, this practice was continued by the Soviet Empire, which arose from the ruins of the collapsed Russian Empire. В рамках знищеної Російської імперії. Our next program will cover where Scythian artifacts that were taken from Ukraine have appeared, what other impudent and cynical crimes the Soviet regime resorted to, and what fate met the artifacts found in Melitopol Barrow.